hey guys, I've moved from organic principles, we are a bit conventional, just so that the farm can survive? It was, it, it was very difficult. Um, I had to start from A. I'd, I've never used pesticides before, so I had to do research, I had to talk to mentors, I had to ask ask other experienced farmers what chemicals I can use to help my crops. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Private Property Farming Podcast. My name is Mbali Mwoko. As usual, your host every Tuesdays and Thursdays right here on the Private Property Channel. And uh, today we are putting a spotlight on another young farmer. I'm super excited to be chatting with her because she's literally at her farm. You could see her produce in the background. Um, and this is what farmers do day in, day out, right? We are at our farms producing to ensure that you are fed at the end of the day. And obviously we are in Youth Month, we're recording in Youth Month. We want to expose and put the spotlight on the young people really that make up the agricultural sector that are positively contributing towards the sector. Because every day people say there are no youth in farming or where are the youth in farming, where are the young females in the agri sector. But this podcast will bring you just those individuals. Let's learn from them. Let's hear their stories, their backgrounds, why they came into the sector. Why is it that they're farming? Why did they decide to study to farm? And um, what is it that they're doing in their farms? You know, where are they selling to? Their contributions? Who are they employing? Um, you know, their challenges. I think, you know, learning and sharing experiences is one way to grow and to understand the intricacies um, around what makes the sector to be what it is today. So if any questions for our young farmer today, please feel free. I can already feel that it's going to be a, an exciting conversation uh, because she is a young one and she's taking the agri world by storm. As I was saying, if you have any questions for our guests, please feel free to do so. And as I say in every episode, if you have any suggestions, please also feel free to bring them forth because this podcast is for you. We want to bring you good and rich in content that can obviously help you in your farming journey. So let's get right into it and say hello to Usnetemba Masinga, who is the director of Snetembi so Produce. Snetemba, thank you so much for joining the podcast. How are you doing and happy youth month. <laughs> I'm good, thanks. How are you? Thank you so much for having me here. I'm doing fantastic. You know, you are so small. You look like I want to just cuddle you up. Uh, you know, I'm still surprised to know that you're 22, but you definitely still look 15, I suppose, you know. <laughs> but tell me, I mean, such a young lady uh, who just looks beaming, you know, you've got a beaming and bright smile. What made you go into the sector uh, and what drew you in towards uh, a farming? Mm. Uh, so I fell in love with agriculture at a very young age. Uh, I grew up in a family that uh, loved farming a lot and it was a way of life. I don't remember my parents going to work. If they said they were going to work, they were going to the farm. Uh, so it's been our source of income for years. Uh, you know, young people in the, in, in the rural areas are either forced or influenced to to, to involve themselves into agricultural activities. Luckily for me, I was really passionate about it. Uh, so yes, I became the director at the age of 15. Uh, and ever since then, <laughs> I enjoy my work. I enjoy my work. Like <laughs> Sometimes I get so excited to share my passion and how I entered the agricultural industry that like I lack words sometimes. But yes, yeah. I hope I answered the question. Oh. Yeah, well, I can definitely relate. You know, I think when you're so excited about something and you do something you love at the at, at, every day, it doesn't really feel like work, as they say. But tell us, I mean, uh, as a young director, boss lady, how does it feel like uh, managing people, leading people? And maybe give us a typical day of how, um, a typical example of how your day looks like at the farm. Mm -hmm. So usually I wake up 
at five, like around five, I'm, I'm usually awake. I need to be the first person on the farm, you know. It's, it's that life of being an entrepreneur. Uh, leading people is very difficult, especially at a young age, because I'm leading people that are older than me. But luckily, throughout the years, my parents have been training me for this. So I was sort of prepared as to how to lead people and manage people at a young age. However, it's still difficult because I'm leading people that are older than me. But yes, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the hang of things. So I need to be the first one at work, you know, time, time, time. I need to be on time because I'm always telling people about time. <laughs> my work is about time. But um Yes, like right now, I'm currently at the farm and uh, I'm the only one today. <laughs> People are off today, but I am working. Yeah. So tell me, what are the challenges of running a business as a young individual? You know, you did say that you don't remember a time where your parents went to work. So I believe that they've always been self-employed. And I guess you are one of the lucky ones where you have parents who were entrepreneurs. So how does it feel like taking ownership of a business and learning how to manage people. So the different divisions, you know, HR, production, uh, finance, uh, management of people, suppliers, customers, etc., and just running a business uh, in its entirety. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's difficult for me right now. Because, and a lot of people don't believe me when I say that I am in charge of almost everything and i'm also part of the labor in, yeah. in in the farm so i have to divide the time to do each and everything it's the finance it's the social media it's supplying so yes i do everything myself honestly um it's it, it's a lot it, it's difficult <laughs> but uh, i think as as, as, as I'm growing, it's helping me because I'll know exactly what to look for when I have to employ someone to do a certain task for me or to run a certain department. So, yes, challenges are there, but um, uh, I'm, I'm growing. I'm growing. It's tough. It's tough, but it, it, it sometimes it needs to be tough. You know, growth is painful, but yeah. I, I'm really learning things. Yeah. Snetemba, tell us, when did you uh, start, which year did you start being fully operational um, as a director in the business? And how many people are you employing currently? And also, tell us about the crops that you're farming. <clears throat> so I became the director at 15 because I really wanted to expand the family business. Mm -hmm. However, I, I say this a lot, but my parents don't like it. I got distracted with varsity uh, at the age of 17. I went to varsity and um, due to COVID, when we, when we were forced to come back, I think it was 2019 or 2020, around that time I was home all the time, even though I was studying online. Um, I used to spend a lot of time on the farm, there in my books. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I would spend time on the farm and that's when I really sat down with my parents and I had to let them know that, no, uh, I think I need to be full time here. I, I think I need to come back and run the family business full time. You know, I was staying in another city and it was kind of difficult for me going back and forth and running a business while doing a science degree at the time. So I became a full time farmer uh, in 2020. I formalized the business uh, since last year and I've been taking care of it financially, like everything. Um, so when we expanded, I wanted to do crops that were not gonna take long to, 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 to grow. So over the years, because we had an issue of water, my parents were doing dry crops like uh, beans, um, yams, you know, things that really didn't require a lot of water. However, when I wanted to expand, it was difficult for them to understand that, okay, spinach, we've never planted spinach. And then I told them that, no, we, we, we should really try spinach and tomatoes. There's, there's a market for it. Uh, red ground nuts, there's a market for it. And so, yes, those are the crops that I've been doing. And I try to employ some of the youth in, 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 in Duelana and 
around four. So there are seasonal workers and then there are two permanent workers that we have. So when, when people ask me how many people I employ, I count myself in. <laughs> so there's like six of us right now on the farm. Fantastic, fantastic. And so just give us an overview of your farm. Um, I do see the beautiful background. I see that it is open land. So what challenges have you had around open land farming? Um, and were you affected by the droughts that happened in the beginning of the year in KZN? Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, a lot of challenges, like right now I'm dealing with um, pest control. Uh, there, there's, there's a lot of fungal diseases, there's a lot of insects chewing on, on, on my spinach and, and, and that has been a real, real big problem for me because I was organic um, before and now I had to switch because there, were, there was a lot of heavy, heavy rains, lost a lot of crops, mm. so I had to start using chemical fertilizers um, and, and other certain chemicals to fight off diseases and insects. Uh, because I had already searched for market before I even planted the spinach, so I had to deliver at a certain time. So I was feeling the pressure and I had to come up with a quick plan, so that forced me to kind of switch to organics. Uh, the floods did affect us a lot because when we, when we started, I started planting spinach as of last year, I think we had a thousand seedlings and then this year, uh, because I was really hoping to expand big. Um, I had 25 seedlings of, of the spinach planted, uh, but the floods came and I lost more than half of that. Uh, more, more than, yes, definitely more than half of that. So the floods did really uh, affect me a lot because right now I'm not organic anymore. With, with, with some of the crops here, I had to switch to chemicals. And yes, like the desired... The, the desired yield that I was hoping for, um, it's not going to happen anymore, but we move. I, I'm, I'm adapting to the change. Yeah, and in actual fact, I meant to say floods and not drought, right? Um, and I suppose mm -hmm. the, 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 the advantages of undercover farming is that you are protected somewhat um, you know, from the excessive and heavy rains. And it's true you know, when it does rain. And I think people don't get to understand because they typically say, I know in my circles, people would say, but farmers complain that there's no rain. And when there is rain, you also complain that there's too much rain. So what is it that <laughs> you want? You know? But I don't think people understand that when there's too much rain, there's too many pests and diseases that happen, right? Which then delay our planting cycles, delay operations. You can't bring the seasonal workers to come work in the fields because everything's muddy. It's not safe to work on uh, such conditions. It's quite hazardous, yeah. you know. And then when there's not much rain, we obviously need some, 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 some um, watering and irrigation for our crops at the end of the day so um yeah. yes you were mentioned that you were affected by the floods you have to you had to change your uh, farming practices from organic to using a bit of pesticides to mitigate those risks how have you ha did you what, did you have to train your team to, to move from organic to using a bit of chemicals? You know, how did they respond to that? And more so maybe your customers, because I believe maybe you were selling to your customers, you know, telling them that this is pesticide free. So what did your customers have to say when you started selling to them? And uh, maybe you have to disclose that, hey guys, I've moved from organic principles. We are a bit conventional just so that the farm can survive. Mm. It, was, it, it was very difficult. Um, I had to start from A. I'd, I've never used pesticides before, so I had to do research. I had to talk to mentors. I had to ask, ask other experienced farmers what chemicals I can use to help my crops. So I had to train myself before I even trained my workers. So l l luckily, I was able to get help on time. Um, and then I was able to, to train them and get them to work. It was difficult for the market part because uh, you go to market before you even plant and you tell them, you know what, you're going to be expecting this quality organic spinach, you know, mm. just be patient with me. It's coming. Ah, And then the floods came and then I had to switch. So it was very difficult for me because I, 
I lost one formal market to store that I was supplying. So I couldn't supply them anymore because my produce was not organic anymore. Mm. So I had to go out there and look for another market. Luckily, I was able to find it. Yeah. And how's the, how's the relationship been with your family? You know, working in the family business, having to take charge. Are they supporting you? Are, the par are your parents, uh, you know, uh, allowing you to lead the vision of the business, the vision of the company? Um, you know, just, just tell us about the, the, the family dynamics at this stage. I think me and my parents have become closer, you know, than than before it's 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 quite it's quite a blessing you know it's quite a blessing for me i really enjoy working with them by the way i still work with them <laughs> yeah. i still work with them on 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 the farm so i i i think for the past six years they were really trying to see if it's something that i can really do because mm. after after dropping out from university and not finishing my biochemistry and microbiology degree, it was kind of difficult for them to fully accept that I'm back home and I'm running a, a farming business at this age. But um, I've, I've been learning and I've been growing and, the, and, and I'm saying it's a blessing because they, they're seeing the growth and they see that I'm, I'm, I'm learning and there's been progress in the business ever since I came back home. So yes, it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes on the show, we also focus on a lot of challenges that farmers face. But I think we know the drill now, you know, besides floods, heavy rains, pest diseases, finance, uh, mentorship, experience, etc. Tell us about your successes. I mean, since you started farming or being fully fledged into the business, tell us about the milestones that you've achieved. What, what do you um, hold dear in your heart what are you grateful for um, for this farm so tell us about the positive things that have happened to you at uh, Snetembi Soul Produce um, I think I'd go back and say the year 2015 for me because that's when my journey started when the when a certain organization called Jumpstart Gift of the Givers came to school and they were able to help me grow my business uh, by providing me with mentorship and financially. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that that's where I would say that uh, it, it's a milestone for me. Um, always grateful for them. And I think it would be uh, 2021. Last year, a lot of things happened, you know. Um, uh, I was able to get into a program with the U.S. Embassy uh uh the program was what what was about women in agriculture we were taught certain skills how to how, how, how to run an agribusiness um i was also able to get into a program with the dot in a biz to uh acquire certain entrepreneurial skills so that has been huge for me i consider that really really one of my huge successes uh, I think working or also getting into a program with GIZ and mm. the German embassy, you know, uh, coming back home and explaining to my parents the importance of why we need more women into agriculture. That program was really an eye opener for me. Um, yes, I consider that one of my huge successes as well. Uh, so yes, last, last year was a really, really, really great year for me. There was a lot of growing. Uh, a, a, a lot of challenges, but it really forced me to grow. Yeah. So, you know, it sounds like you are, yes, not only passionate, but you've really immersed yourself in the industry and, you know, you deciding to not pursue your, your, your degree and just focus on farming. It seems like it's paying off, right? Um, the hard work that you've put in really is showing the results. So tell us, you know, What's, what's, what's in it for you in the next three years, five years? Where do you see Snetembi so Produce growing? Where do you see yourself as an individual growing? Um, yeah, what are your goals for the next three to five years? <laughs> oh, wow, the list is long. But I, 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 I think the first one would be owning um, my owning land owning a farm that belongs to me. You know, my grandfather was able to 
to leave a piece of land for me, but it's, it's, it's not enough and I'm currently leasing land, but I know it's not enough because I'm constantly expanding and, and, and you know, there's market for my produce. So if I had bigger land, you know, I would be making more revenue. I think the second one is probably getting a degree related to agriculture, you know. Uh, I'm constantly learning and I'm attending these programs, but I really, really, really want to acquire a qualification that is related to agriculture. Uh, I think the third one would be that um, I really, really want to continue working with children that I'm working with right now because I teach uh, children still in school in my community about the importance of, of growing their own food, you know, uh, one home, one garden. So I really think, I, I really see my NPO being successful in the real in, in the in the next five years, I see myself going to other rural communities and teaching them about the importance of growing um, organic food, of just growing food. Uh, you, you know, um, yes, the list is long, but I'll just stop there for now. <laughs> I'm actually glad that the list is long because it shows that you really want to grow yourself uh, within the industry, make an impact most importantly within the industry but because it is youth month you are a young person i'm a young person um, in the agri sector tell us as we round off this conversation today i just want to find out what is your message to young people in the agri sector um, and maybe if you can let, uh, expand it just a little bit also to young people who are just venturing into business uh, I would say don't be afraid to get your, hand, your, your, your hands dirty if you're going to be entering the agriculture sector. Uh, and, and as for businesses, uh, don't be demotivated. Uh, please start small. Funding will, will find you like along the way. I've never been funded large amounts. I've just been using what I've been saving, investing money into my own business. Uh, I would say that they would need to be patient, you know, being in, be, being an entrepreneur requires you to be patient with yourself, with business. Um, I would say do research, you know, collaborate with other farmers. It's very important to go out there, reach out to other farmers, learn. There's, there's a, a, lot, a lot of knowledge to share and resources to share with, with other farmers or other people that are, are in business, you know, in, 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 in general. Uh, so, yes, I would think collaborating, doing research. Um, I would say hard work pays off. Mm. And I'm really going to say this because I've seen like um, most of the youth right now are really, really into the soft life. So I just want to say that hard work pays off. We really need to go out there and start working. Uh, but work smart, <laughs> work yeah. smart, obviously. Uh, so yes, I would really say I would motivate them to just start businesses, start something, start small. Uh, you know, a lot of people are motivated when they don't get funding, when they mm. don't get investments to start businesses. But I always say that uh, investors will want to see what you're already doing and mm. add on to that. So yeah. yes. Wow, Snetemba, thank you so much for your passion, for your love of the industry, uh, for the love of your community, you know, teaching young people and seeing the importance of really transferring knowledge to young individuals so that they can too start their own businesses and perhaps maybe, you know, look at careers within the agri sector. Thank you so much for your time today and good luck with everything that you're doing. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. That was Snetemba Masinga, and she's the director of Snetembiso Produce. She's based in KZN and Wendwe, and um, she's farming, guys. She's 22, director at 15. Uh, she is running a farm of plus minus, I think she said, two permanent people, but four seasonal individuals. Um, and that is no joke. It might seem like a small number to you, but to manage people, run a production uh, of crops, Fresh produce at that, um, you know, deal with open farming and the challenges that come with open land farming, um, managing labor, managing clients, customers, and still trying to deal with yourself and grow yourself at the end of the day. Over and above that, she's teaching other young people in her community, you know, how they can make a success out of farming and the importance of food security. 
listen, if that does not inspire you, um, then I don't know what will because uh, she's definitely one to look out for. And let's just support her. If you know Usnetemba and you're around her region or her, or her area, visit her farm, support her, you know, connect with other customers. I mean, this girl is growing and I think she can uh, definitely do great wonders with her community support and just any other stakeholders that want to support her initiative. But thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for tuning in, for subscribing. Please share this podcast to anyone that needs inspiration. And uh, yeah, keep following us to bring you or introduce to you and expose to you the phenomenal trailblazers that are making a contribution to the South African agricultural sector. Thank you.